Hello guys, in this one we are going to try and recreate the Plex from Complications by Deadmau5. Complications is famously the second track off the random album title album, and that is actually my favorite album. So this is the sound we're trying to recreate. And I got pretty close, but this was such a hard sound to make. But here's where we got to. Okay, so I will go over this patch as well as a couple things that Deadmau5 did that I wanted to see if I could recreate because they're very interesting sound design techniques. So first off, I will show you the notes of this. It's a very weird chord. It's C, D, E, and F sharp all hitting next to each other at the same time. And the bass note of this song is a B, but with this F sharp, it's in G major. That actually places this song into the Phrygian mode. So the Phrygian mode starts on the third note of the major scale. So if we look at G major, that would make it B. So imagine this G major scale just starting on B these notes above. So if you look at the B minor scale, you can also get to the Phrygian mode by dropping the second note in a minor scale by a semitone. If you imagine this note drops, then we have the G major scale. So as well as this, the Phrygian mode is one of the darkest sounding modes, and that describes this song perfectly and why it's so dark and emotional. So now that we have the notes down, I will begin by taking off all of the processing that we have. So if I go into Serum, here's what we have. Yeah, sounds pretty sick. So I pushed this up to two voices and I used the Juno wavetable. That just sounded like the proper one for this. And then I started creating that pluck shape. So I used the LFO one on the level here. And here's what that sounds like. And then I threw a filter on and threw that LFO one onto the cutoff as well. I'm using envelope here and I'm, I've been using Hertz recently. I think I can just get a, a better tuning on the, the pluck shape there. So here's what we have now. Then I threw on some distortion just to try and beef it up a bit and kind of smear out the harmonics of it so it's more of a knock. And then just some compression to further emphasize that pluck shape. I threw a little bit of plate reverb on here. And then I use this macro here to control this note on random to this LFO rate. So each note has a slightly different rate to it, but not that much. Okay, so next I group this serum and I added some other sounds to kind of emphasize the transient, and give it a little bit more of a bright character. So first I added this kick shape to it and I filtered it around 1K and took off some of the high end. So here's what we get from that. And I also added this little hat here to kind of emphasize the highs even more. It's very subtle, but it all comes into play when the reverb comes in. So next, I added this very short kind of slap delay to it. And what that does is kind of emphasize the high end. Very subtle again. And then I use some serum effects and I'm just distorting it a little bit more. I used a lot of distortion and saturation on this because it felt like it really needed to be beefed up. So I threw on some decapitator. And then I just EQ'd it. And then here's where the reverb comes in. It's pretty much the entire sound. So here's what that sounds like with this reverb on.
and I used a plate reverb. So very short, very short decay. And then I was messing with the size attack. So the reverb comes right after the hit. So that makes the room feel even smaller. After this, I just used some more EQ, another decapitator, finally compressing it again to just glue all of that processing together. And then finally throwing it into a limiter just to smush those peaks down. So that's pretty much there. And then this side chain is for when the beat comes in. I also sent this to a return track that has another decapitator on it. And I saw this in a Yalson FA tutorial where he was using saturation as a return track, which I thought was interesting. And that really helps to beef up the sound. These next return tracks are a delay, which I'm sending to. And then I, I'm actually sending this delay return track to this other return track, which is this reverb. And that recreates the kind of reverb that Dead Mouse had in this track, the very dark, vast reverb. So you can hear that here when it comes in. The second thing I did was add in these little synth fills that you will hear if I play this all together at the start here and at the start here, you'll hear these synth fills on the sides. So the way I'm doing that is I duplicated this patch and it sounded like the delayed signal was actually more soft. So instead of that plucky envelope, I push that to the right and that softens it up. If I play this track. So that's what is being sent to this audio track. And then this audio track is hundred percent wet on a ping pong delay with the one engaged and that creates this sound. And then I am just EQing that a little bit to emphasize that high end a bit. And then I'm, I'm automating the track on or off. So if I play those things together again, you'll hear the delay coming in on the side, which is a, a big feature of Dead Mouse's track. And that was just a cool sound that I really wanted to figure out how he did. The next thing is just this bass patch. Um, this is similar to that some chords bass that I created before. It's just some saw waves um, with a certain amount of rectify distortion on there. And it's actually pretty wide. And then I'm sending that to this delay as well as a decapitator. So all of those together, we get this. All right, so if I just throw on that shaper box again, turn the beat on, and this is the final result. So I really hope this helped you guys. Um, I tried to get it as close as I possibly could, but I had a lot of trouble with it. But I will be coming back with some more videos. If you like this, please consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.